In this video, we're going to look at what is the crush spread. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. So soybean crush, what is it? How can we trade it? What's the point of it? Well, just like crack spread with crude oil, where we get a barrel of crude oil and we get some refined products that come out of it, similar thing happens with soybeans. This is called the crush spread because ultimately soybeans are farmed, they're crushed, and then they're converted into soybean meal and soybean oil. Now, soybean meal is generally used for feed, for livestock, etc. Soybean oil is used in things like margarine, salad dressings, that kind of stuff. So two distinct products we get out of the soybeans themselves. But the people who are doing this, who are crushing the beans or refining the crude oil, doing the crude oil, need to make a margin. And when we're trading the crush spread, we're trading the margin that these guys are making when they're doing it. Now, we can see pretty obviously already how one of these price movements could influence the margin that the crush is making, the person doing the crushing is making. If the price of soybeans goes high and the actual products that come out of the crush, the meal and the oil remain low, their margin is going to go down, right? Because they're spending X amount to put in, they're getting Y out, but they're spending more to put in than they were before. And so they're making less money. Similarly, the other way around, if soybean price goes low, but these still remain relatively high, all very good, they can keep chucking in loads of beans at a low price, making, still making a higher price on the meal and the oil, they're making a decent margin. But you can imagine from a commercial perspective, that's what they want, but obviously the people who are buying the meal and buying the oil aren't gonna be wanting to pay higher prices for it when they can see that actually people are paying low prices for soybeans. So you kind of get this mean reversion price, as you do with the crack spray, which is the refinery margin that oil refiners are making when they're refining barrels of crude oil into gasoline, heating oil, etc. We get the same kind of thing with this. The margin goes up, the margin comes down. And so it's a mean reverting type trade. So if you're a speculator, you would use this and look at it from a mean reversion perspective most of the time. Unless there's some anomaly, some sort of environmental concern that immediately gives you a shortage of soybean oil and we're using it for something you know, revolutionary or what have you, and there's some sort of unusual supply demand imbalance. Generally speaking, the crush spread picks up and the margin begins up getting higher. People are gonna to want to sell it and it's gonna come back down. It gets too low, they're gonna to wanna to buy and come back up. So you're gonna have this mean reversion type trade. Now, some speculators, that's what we would do, we look for that to change. For hedging purposes, if someone is looking to hedge the crush spread, let's say they are refining or crushing, should I say, the soybeans, and they want to lock in the value that the profit margin they're making, then they would use this kind of crush spread to lock in that price for the next six months, year, whatever it is. They know that they're not really susceptible to any fluctuations in any of these individual futures contracts. Okay, let's have a look. Now we've got that down. Let's have a look at what happens when we actually crush one bean. So when we crush a bean, we get about 80% meal, get about 18% oil. That's actually a little bit more, it's like 183 or something, but give or take, and then 2% waste. And the way that we look at it is, if we want to trade this, is this. This is kind of... And it gets a little bit complicated because it's relatively simple, but unfortunately, soybeans trade in bushels, soybean meal trades in tons, and soybean oil trades in pounds. So to get a true representation of how much we're potentially making or what the, or what the margin is, um, we're gonna have to convert all those into one common unit. So really what we do is, let's look at an example, good way of doing it is, uh, soybeans are trading at $10.375 per bushel. Uh, soybean meal is trading at 318.80 per ton, and soybean oil is trading at 36.94 per pound. Right? Really confusing because different sums. So what we do is we convert them all to a common a unit. So soybean meal we multiply by 0.22, crude uh, not crude oil, the soybean oil we multiply by 0.11, and then we once we've got those two numbers, we add those together because that's the cost of that's the value of the product that we've crushed into. We take away the cost per bushel that we've put into the actual crushing process, how much it's cost us to put those soybeans in, and then we come up with a final answer. And the final answer for this is 70 cents margin, crushing margin per one bushel. So for every bushel we put in, we're making 70 cents. We can extrapolate that out. Now, you can see how if, for example, soybean meal suddenly went up to 400 per ton, that would increase this part of it significantly 
significantly and so we'd be making far more margin because we're getting far more for the meal part of it. Same with the oil. If oil increases dramatically, we're going to be making good margin on that. Now, obviously, we've got to work out, you know, we know how much oil we're making compared to, to meal. A meal increase in price is going to be far more significant. And let's look at the other way around. Soybeans, if soybeans reduce in price, then we're going to be making a lot more money. However, it can flip on the other way. Soybeans increase in price, and for some reason, these don't increase in price or they decline in price. They could almost get a negative margin, and a company then will not be making any money. They'll assume that it will come back into positivity at some point. They're not going to stop production, you would, assume, you would hope not. Um, but hopefully, they've hedged before they get to that position. But if they do get to that position, the assumption is that this is just short term anom anomaly, and ultimately, it's going to write itself again because these guys can't continue crushing a negative margin forever. So, there are opportunities here. And the best way of doing this is to plot this kind of stuff on your chart. You can, most charting packages, you can kind of do that. You can say, I want to plot X minus Y plus Z in brackets, and it will give you that price. You can also go in and you can trade these futures contracts directly on the exchange, or you can go into the CME group and trade the crush spread, I believe, just with a pure option. So if you've got a view on that crush spread, let's say you've plotted it out on your platform, you think it's too high, you can either trade it with a synthetic product you can create with a CFD or spread bet or futures contract, or you can trade it directly with an options contract. Anyway, guys, that's the crush spread. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.